them up. So, one question. What is the tabernacle? What is it? You tell me. What, what was it? Anybody know? The holy place of God, the dwelling place of God. Okay. This tabernacle was actually like the temple that the people of Israel had in the desert. Okay. Now, they traveled for 40 years in the desert. They used this as their temple. Again, afterwards, they used it also in Israel for another 360 years until Solomon built the temple in Jerusalem. Okay, and then this was the end of the tabernacle. Now, God told Moses, build me the tabernacle. It's called Olmoy, so I can dwell in my people. The word to dwell in Hebrew, it's called Lishkon. Okay, Lishkon, it comes from the word Shekina, Shekina. Okay, do you know Shekina? Yeah. Okay, that comes from the same word. When God told that to Moses, he told them, build me it so I can dwell inside my people. Betoch ami. Not with my people, but inside. And we know what it means when he's dwelling inside of us. At that time, where every time they stopped, this was at the center, and all the 12 tribes camped around. Three tribes on each side of the tabernacle. Okay, everybody with his own spot. You know what tribe was here at the entrance? What tribe was here? Levi? Levi? No. Judah. Uh, Judah. Somebody Judah. said Judah? Yeah. Yes. The tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah. Okay. We know the line of Judah. Jesus comes from the tribe of Judah. He's the closest to the gate. Okay. He's the closest to the entrance. But to the area inside, only the priests and Levites can go inside. Nobody else. All the rest of the people can. Okay. Um, at the Bible time, if you read it, in the book of Exodus, everything was measured by cubits. Cubits is from here to here. Okay? Uh, this is the measurement. The average is about 48 centimeters. So this is how we build this. So this is pretty much the original size of what was in the Bible with uh, the people of Israel. The wood that they used to build everything was acacia wood. Acacia tree, this is acacia tree right here. Okay. If you look at it, it's not a very big tree. Yeah. Now you see the big pillar of gold. It was from acacia wood. Okay. So to take a tree like this and to make something like this takes a lot of work. You need to clean it. You need to straighten it to glue it together. It also has very big spikes. If you go closer, you see it has big spikes. Okay. It's crooked and big spikes. And we will talk more about it inside. So we said that there is only one way inside. This is the only way. No other way. If somebody else who's not allowed to go inside would try to go from the side, God would kill him. Okay? It's a holy place, right? Yeah. He will kill him. So there's only one way inside. What did Jesus say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody, nobody can go to the Father inside but through me. Everything that Jesus said, I am. I am the light of the world, I am the bread of life, I am the good shepherd. Everything has been fulfilled here in the tabernacle. All right, you ready to go? Yes. yes. All right, let's go inside. You'll see that at the tabernacle, yeah, they had a lot of treasure, a lot of gold and silver and copper. Okay. All the materials they brought with them from where? You know? From Egypt, right? The people of Israel took all the treasure with them from Egypt when they came out. Now the altar, here, 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 here coming up this one. The altar itself was also made from acacia wood, from acacia tree, and it was covered with copper. Mm -hmm. And everything they had to carry by hand. So if you see on the sides, on this side, on that side, they had rod, rods so they can pick it up on their shoulders and move from one place to another. Mm -hmm. Okay? For 40 years. Oh, okay. So, because of the people, we're not allowed to go inside. They brought the animals only to the entrance. And then the priest took the animal inside. They killed the animal. They took the blood and they poured the blood on the horns. They poured the blood around the altar. And then the sacrifice 
the, the animal inside. Now, I see that you guys didn't bring any sacrifices. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Jesus died already. Jesus died already. We don't need to. Yeah. We yeah. from the Bible that God made the first sacrifice. Right? When Adam, when Adam and Eve sinned, God killed an animal and he covered them with the skin. And we see that he also finished the last sacrifice. He offered the last sin sacrifice. Now what's interesting, there are many sacrifices they have to do here every day. One of them was special, it's the sin sacrifice. Here, they only burned the fat and the kidneys of the animal. And they were not allowed to touch or eat from the meat. Right? Because if you eat from the sin sacrifice, it means you're taking part of the sin that the sacrifice died. When Jesus died, he was our sin sacrifice. He's the one who took all the blame for us. Now, when he died, he didn't die here. Okay? Because here, like we said, they only burned the fat and the kidneys. All the rest of the animals, the skin, the bones, and the flesh, they put it in a holy place outside of the camp, far away from the people. And there they burn it in the holy place. God said, he will take the sin away from the people. So the sin sacrifice was outside of the people. Where did Jesus die? Outside of Jerusalem. Everything we see here has to do with Jesus. Once we understand that Jesus is the only way, the truth and the life, we need to accept his sacrifice. Only after we accept his sacrifice, there's one more thing he asks us to do. You know what it is? Get baptized. Mm -hmm. Baptism is a testimony. It's not that the water itself washes us, but it is a testimony to the people around us to show them, look, I have decided to follow Jesus. Yeah. Okay? Now let's talk a little bit about this. Okay. Okay, so this is the wash basin. Okay? Uh, did you read in the book of Exodus about the tabernacle? Yes. yes. Okay. You saw that God was really specific about everything. Yeah? God gave Moses the instructions on how to build it. Okay. If you read about this, we know almost nothing about it. Not the size, not the weight, or what it looked like. It could be smaller, bigger, square, we don't know. All we know is that this was made out of pure copper. Okay? This was actually made out of the mirrors of the women. Okay? Because back then they made they took a sheet of copper, they, they polished it, and they used it as a mirror. Oh, so this okay. was built only from the mirrors of the women. And this was full of water. In Hebrew it's called Maim Chaim. What is Maim Chaim? Cold water. Living water. Living water. Maim Chaim. Chaim means life. Ah, life. Maim Chaim. No, the Maim Chaim. Okay? Living water. Now, you remember the story of Jesus and the Samaritan woman at the well? Yes. Okay. So, when Jesus came and he talked to her, he told her, If you would know who I am and you would ask me for water, I would give you Maim Chaim, living water. Now, what does it mean, living water, in the Bible? The Word of God. What does the Word of God give us? Salvation. Salvation. The, war, the, the living water. And he told her, if you will drink, you will become a spring of living water. You will be able to bring living water out to other people, like the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So we see that God gave us the Word of God. He gave us His salvation out of His love to the people. Like just like here, it's written in the Bible. You can't measure the love of God. There is no depth, there is no height, there is nothing. But it's always full with water. And whoever drinks from it will become a spring of living water. Now here, the priests had to wash their hands and their feet. Okay, when they worked here, the priests were barefoot. They had no shoes. So they had blood on their hands, they had blood on their feet, they had blood on their clothes. Every time the priests came to take from the living water, they can see their own reflection from the water in the mirror. And they can see that the white clothes is actually full of blood. And then they have to wash themselves, cleanse themselves, and only after they wash all the blood, only then they can enter into the holy place. Okay. All right. So let's go to the side here so we can see the side of the building. Okay. So, 
you remember that we said that they had to travel in the desert for 40 years? Yes. 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 Imagine carrying this for 40 years. Okay? Uh, it's man. not easy. It's very hard work. But the way that God made them build it was a very smart way. We see that everything outside is made out of copper. You see, there's copper bases on the bottom of all the, of all the uh, pillars and the copper uh, wash basin and the copper altar. The holier we get, it's going to be with gold on the inside. And here we have sil uh, silver bases on the bottom. Okay, can everybody see this? Yeah. The sides yes. here? Okay. These are made out of acacia wood, acacia tree. Okay. Just like that. Imagine taking this tree and making this. It's very hard and they covered it with gold. And they, these were connected one to another like this. One to another. And what held them together are golden rings with rods. So they can take this out oh, okay. and take the building apart and move real quick from one place to another. Oh. Okay? It was very special work. It took them maybe, maybe one hour to take everything down. Okay, the amount of people, the work here was amazing. It was over 5,000 people, Levites, working here and doing all the work with everything. You ready to go inside? Yes. yes. Okay, let me open it and then everybody go inside. Okay. okay. Yes, Beth. No, no, no. No. Okay. Okay. All right, can everybody see me? Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, very good. This area, okay, it's called HaKodesh. What does it mean, the Kodesh? The Holy. Here, only the priests can go inside. Okay, we see there's three different areas. There's the courtyard, where the priests are Levites. Here, only the priests. And in here, and here, only the high priest, and only on Yom Kippur. Once a year, that's it. Okay? Now, the, the entrance was always closed. It wasn't open like this, okay? And they didn't have 80 people in here. They only had a few people every time. Uh, we see here on this side, right over there we have the menorah. Okay? The menorah was made, listen, it was made out of pure gold. It was one piece of gold. It was about 70 kilos of gold. Okay? And if you see, it had seven lamps. Okay? And every day, the priest had to put olive oil inside. Because this was holy fire. It was always on. All the time. Okay? It was always, always, always on. But if you think about it, this was the only light that was here. No other light. The curtain is closed. This is the only light. Now what did Jesus say? I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. He is the only light. Now, do you remember the tree outside that we saw, the acacia tree, the crooked with big thorns? Okay. This represents us, the people, the regular people. We are born like this. We're born crooked. We're born with thorns that we hurt, that, that we hurt each other. God said, if you will bring yourself to me, okay, if you will bring yourself to me, then I will take you, I will shape you, clean you, and use you. For myself just like here imagine what he did with the wood here is the same thing that he does with us he took us he cleaned us and he covered us with righteousness with gold and our job even though the menorah is the only light here the entire building is covered with gold so the light is spreading everywhere now he said now you are the light of the world now it's our job to spread the light of jesus just like he is the light now, right on the other side, we have a table with bread. 
Okay, one moment. Okay, it's called the showbread table. Okay. Now there are 12 breads. One representing each tribe, but holy bread. Only the priest could eat from this bread. Okay, they had to make it fresh every Sunday, but eat it only on Shabbat, on today. So for a whole week, the bread just sat here on the table, and they didn't touch it. Okay, now they said it was fresh the whole time. Here, not so much. Okay, um, it, it was a miracle. It stayed fresh. Now, who ate from this bread that was not a priest? David. 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 Okay, David. Now, David was not a priest. He wasn't even from the tribe of Levite, right? He was from the tribe of Judah. Judah. Now, we know that the Messiah, Jesus, came, was the descendant. Uh, Jesus was the descendant of David. What would happen if God would kill David for eating the bread? Do you see the problem? <laughs> now, when, when David went to the high priest... He was with his men. He wasn't alone. Do you know how many men was with him? 100. 400 people. 400 people. The 400 people that was with David in the desert, in the area of uh, the Dead Sea, okay, uh, they were not so good people at the beginning. They were murderers. They were thieves. So, so David went to the high priest and told him, me and my men are hungry, and we need food. We need something. And the high priest knew that David was chosen to become king. So the high priest gave him bread. He gave him from the holy bread, from the show bread. Do you know how many breads he gave him? No. Five. How many? Five. Five breads. The priest gave David five breads for him and his 400 men. We know in Psalm that David talks about the Messiah to come. He says, who am I next to the Messiah? The Messiah is so much bigger. And how much bigger is Jesus Yeshua, then David himself, that he took also the five bread, not for 400 people, but for 5,000. And he said, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats from this, will never die. This means that we need to take part of Jesus. He said, do this as a remembrance for me, the last time. So again, everything we have here points eventually to Jesus. Everything. So, so, here, okay. it's a little bit hard to see, but it's okay, we'll have enough time for everybody to go and go around and see everything. Okay? Uh, so here we have another altar, it's a much smaller altar, okay, this is not for uh, animals, this is for incense. You know what's incense? Yeah. Okay. It uh, does a lot of smoke. It smells good. And it represents uh, the prayers of the people. Okay. So every day in the morning and evening when the, when the Kohanim, when the priests came here, they put oil in the menorah and they burned incense for God. Okay. For the prayers. Okay. But I don't know if you can see, but there is blood on the horns. You see the blood? Yeah. Okay. The blood they put here, only the blood of the sacrifice of Yom Kippur. Mm -hmm. It's the only time where the high priest, okay, the first one was Aaron, the, the brother of Moses, where the high priest came with blood, with a gold bowl full of blood. And he walked in here and he poured the blood on the horns, he poured it on top of the veil and inside into the ark. The high priest had a special job. Okay? There was only one high priest and he served here. He served God until the day he died. Okay? No vacation, no pen, nothing. Only when he dies, then his son would become high priest after him. Okay? Now he had a special clothes that was only made for him. He had the blue, where on the bottom, he had bells and pomegranates. Okay. Oh, do you hear it? This was so all the people could hear that they're next to the high priest. He had the ephod with the 12 stones, with the 12 tribes, close to his heart. He says, do it so they'll be close to your heart. And he has, again, the names, the same 12 tribes on his shoulders. 
But that shows the responsibility the high priest had for the people. Because on Yom Kippur, when he came here with the blood, he came to offer forgiveness for the sins of the people to God. The high priest was between God and the people. He was representing the people to God, and he was representing God to the people. So he had a very special job. We know that from the book of Hebrews, it says that Jesus was our high priest, is the big high priest. Here the high priest had to do it year after year after year, again and again and again. And first he had to offer a, a sacrifice for his own sin before he can offer a sacrifice for the sin of the people. On Yom Kippur, the high priest had only the white. Do you see the white robe? Only one piece of white robe from the top all the way to the bottom. When Jesus, when he went to the cross as our high priest, he didn't come like a king with a golden crown on his forehead and precious stones, a special clothes only for him. He came humble. With one piece of robe, he went to the cross. Now, he went to the cross because he loved us. Like the high priest loved the 12 tribes. But Jesus actually took his own cross, our cross, on his shoulders. That was our responsibility that Jesus took to the cross. But Jesus only had to do it one time. Only once. Yeah. Only once. And he didn't have to offer a sacrifice for his own sin. Because why? He was perfect. He was the sin sacrifice by himself. And then he was able to go inside. Now let's talk about the Hall of Holies here. Okay, because there is space only for one person inside, the high priest. And we're a little bit more than that. So let's talk and then we'll go inside. Okay, can you see okay? Yeah. Okay, have fun. Okay, alright, alright. So, Arona Brit, or the Ark of the Covenant. This was the holiest area at the tabernacle. This is the place where only the high priest can be and only on Yom Kippur. That's it. Uh, what, 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 what about the mountain where Jesus died? We'll talk about that later. So here we have the Ark of the Covenant. This was so holy that nobody was even allowed to see it. This was covered when they traveled, so the people didn't see it. The high priest himself, when he came here, we didn't know if he saw it, because, well, there's no menorah here, so there's no light. And when he walked, he probably went under the veil, because there's no opening. He went under, and he stayed on, his, on the ground, out of respect to God. Like Moses fell on his face in front of the burning bush, so did the high priest when he came here. We have the angels, the, cher the, uh, the cherubims. They're made out of pure gold. But the ark was made out of acacia wood covered with gold. Do you remember what was inside the, uh, the ark? Okay. The Ten Commandments. The two tablets and the rod. What else? The rod of the, yeah, Aaron. Yeah, Aaron's rod. Yeah, the staff of Aaron. And mana. Three things. The Ten Commandments. The staff, the rod of Aaron, and manna. Okay? So this is the covenant, the brit, that God made with people of Israel. He promised the people that he will take care of them when they come out of Egypt. That's why they have the manna. The rod of Aaron, it had flowers and almonds. That showed that the high priest, Aaron, would be the high priest out of all the people. And that the priesthood would go from father to son. It's a covenant that he did with the tribe of Levites. And the Ten Commandments is the law. Now why did God gave Moses the law? Why did he give us the Ten Commandments? For us to remember? Us to remember? Yeah, but not just that. It's a law, right? It's like a mirror. It tells us what we're allowed to do and what we're not allowed to do. And that way we can check because we have sin in the world. We see. Okay, you're not allowed to do this, you're not allowed to do this. 
this shows us that we are sinners. He said, if you can keep the law, that means you're perfect. When Jesus came, he was perfect. He said, I didn't come to cancel the law. I came to fulfill it. So he is the only one who actually kept the entire law. But when the priest came here, he sprinkled the blood on the ark, on the mercy seat, seven times. Seven, okay, seven is a number, it's a holy number, it's a completion number in the Bible. Very special. Seven number, yeah, yeah. Uh, seven times he covered it with blood. This shows that we are no longer under the law, but we are under the blood of the sacrifice. We can't keep the law, so that's why God gave us Jesus. Only through the blood of the sacrifice, only through the blood of Jesus, we can enter and we can be together with God. See, God told uh, Aaron and Moses that he would talk to the high priest between the angels and the ark from here. So this, the glory of God, the Shekinah, the Shekinah of God, this is what made this holy. Because the ark itself, it's man-made. It was not holy. It was not holy. There's nothing holy about it. It's a guy named Bezalel. He made it. Without God, nothing is holy. Nothing. This place was not holy until God came and he actually was here. In the Jewish tradition, at the uh, Bible times, when a father died, he tears his clothes. Okay? You can read it in different stories. What happened when Jesus died? The cloth. The cloth. The veil behind you. A rip from top to bottom. What, what did it mean? It didn't just mean that God the Father was sad about the son that died. Right? Jesus shouted on the cross. He said, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Eli, Eli, lama azaftani. But it shows that now we have access to the Father. We don't need the veil. We don't need the high priest anymore. Because we have Jesus. We have free access to God, to the glory of God. See, because at the second temple, the Ark of the Covenant was gone. It wasn't there. There was nothing there. This was gone. And again, this shows this was not holy. God is what's holy. Amen? Amen. All right. So. <coughs> what happened to the Ark? We don't know. Yeah, we don't know what happened to it. This is the rod, the rod of Aaron, and the two tablets of Ten Commandments, and the manna. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. Mr. Beast. So what we will do, I will give you guys time to take pictures, to go around. Uh, I will be outside if you have any more questions. I have, if you want to, I have cards.